think about today how the things that make us unique, we actually might find some things that we share. I've been teaching for 13 years. Since the beginning of my career, I've always felt really drawn to the social emotional learning piece of teaching and I've always made it a priority to ensure that you know my students voices are heard and they feel welcomed in my spaces. And one thing I've noticed about your teaching over the years that we've worked together is that you already have a lot of welcoming practices in place in your classroom. In the beginning of the school year I think it's one of the most perfect times to do so much community building. Um, one of the things that we like to do is talk about our best selves. So when we're having a moment of, of stress or a moment where we're not really feeling that good, we can look at our best self portrait, um, which will hope, hopefully bring us back to that headspace of when we're feeling great. Instead of me telling the students what all the rules are in school, we spend a lot of time talking about what do we need in our community to feel good. It's totally student driven. They choose four or five words um, that they want to kind of adhere to this school year. And we sign a contract and we talk about, well, what happens if somebody isn't abiding by those rules? I mean, I think that's really important too because they know that they can help each other or they can find a trusted adult if things aren't really going well. Which is nice. It gives them a sense of um, agency over how they want to feel in the classroom. Yeah. This summer, I was able to attend the Radical Welcoming Workshops with Dr. Chris Emden um, through Lincoln Center Activate and shared them with you. Something that I was really inspired by from watching the video was the ways in which a classroom space could be transformed to be more welcoming. What were some of your takeaways after watching that conversation? Um, what was your thinking after that? There were so many amazing um, ideas that were talked about. I, I really um, remember the conversation around the piece of artwork that mm. was there. Yeah. Um, so in here, our artwork is the best self wall mm -hmm. made by the kids, which is cool. And then this idea that, you know, having the having the students feel that it's theirs. So a lot of the um, posters and signs that are around the room are all student created. After watching the Radical Welcoming PD and, and thinking about all the children that have gone through in the pandemic, the idea came about to start the identity work now because if students are able to share those pieces of themselves with their community, mm -hmm. that's helping to build the community space um, and strengthen those relationships mm -hmm. early on. I want you to think about the countries, the states, the cities, the towns, where your family is from. Where is your family from? On your post-it note, you have a minute. Jot down the countries, the states, the cities for where your family is from. The poster for that's right over here. So when you're ready, you can post it. In doing this work now, what are some of your hopes as to what will happen from having moved this work earlier in the year? Um, the hope is that our classroom community will be a strong place where students feel empowered, um, where they trust one another, um, where they know each other on a more personal level. When the pandemic started, everybody wanted to like get masks so they can, like at first everything was fine, but then um, there was a warning and then we had to go on a lockdown. So we, um, we, went, we did homeschool for 30 days, mm -hmm. but this year we came back because Things have changed. I think it's so interesting because yesterday we were talking about the parts of our identity that stay the same and the parts of our identity that change. Do you remember that? Yeah, masks change. That's part of our identity right now that's changed. Could it change again? Yeah, We'll see. Thank you for sharing with me. I mean, I think it's really interesting that the masks came up in general because if this were you know, a few years ago, a mask wouldn't be a part of a child's identity. You have been brainstorming all the different parts of your identity and specifically how to build your I am from home. 
and you have lots of great ideas. So take a look at your brainstorm page. When we were together, we were talking about places in our community, different similarities that we share. We were talking about your home, right? What your home looks like. So today we're going to use all those things that you brainstormed to begin creating your own I Am From poem. So we um, open the unit with making identity web. So just talking about what identity is, what does it mean, and that we can choose which identities we share with others. Mm -hmm. um, so the students were really reflective about their own personal identities. And then we had the opportunity to think about specific questions, our favorite foods, our places where our families are from, um, things that we see in our community. And the kids had a really nice conversation about that and noticed so many similarities. It's fun to see, when I've been in here, see them make those little connections. Like we talked about, the, there are two children who both have parents from India, but mm -hmm. they had not picked up on that beforehand. And mm -hmm. we're super excited to discover that through this process. And yeah. so I, I thought that was pretty cool. The I Am From poem, um, George L. Lyon is the inspiration for this poem. It ties in the writing curriculum element and also this social emotional learning piece. We went through the George L. Lyon poem and just took notice of the things that were meaningful before we began drafting our own. Have there ever been, in doing any of this identity work, any challenging conversations that have come up that have maybe made, uh, have put you in a difficult or uncomfortable situation? I'm, I'm thinking about a student who um, when asked to like brainstorm part of the, you know, part of her identity, um, mm -hmm. she had mentioned that she can't share that with anybody else, mm -hmm. that it's personal, that it's family business. And I think that's okay. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we, I want to give all of myself to my students and I want them to feel the same way, but it's also important to recognize that, you know, if someone's not, if a student's not comfortable sharing that, yeah. Um, that's their choice. And right. that's the beauty of sharing our identities and not assuming something mm -hmm. about somebody else. I also noticed um, one of the students the other day, he told you um, that he didn't have anything special. It was yeah. just normal. Everything yeah. was just normal. <laughs> Which right. is a funny thing to say because um, I don't know what normal is. <laughs> Um, <laughs> I think that was, I, I'm not sure if that's what I said, but that was my thought. Like, yeah. what is normal? Right, what does that mean? <laughs> um, but I noticed after you stopped and talked to him, he did start to come up with a few more, you know, specific details. Yes. Yeah, we were really, uh, I was trying to have him just hone in on specific things. Like, you know, what you do on your birthday may not may be normal to you, but it might not be normal for somebody else. Right. So sharing a little bit about that tells your story. And if you think about, you know, if you are making a space welcoming, but then I don't welcome your whole self into that space, then there's a disconnect and this isn't going to work. Right. So I, I'm also optimistic that by continuing to do this work and continuing to like peel away the layers of who they are, that now we're thinking of the whole child being welcomed right. into the space. How do you fit this into your day? Like, I don't, you know, teachers are jam-packed already. There's a sense of urgency around um, making sure that kids are, you know, getting what they need this year. Um, you know, we hear a lot about academic learning loss and there's a lot of pressure to make sure that, um, you know, you're, you're making sure they're ready for whatever comes up next mm -hmm. in their academic careers. Like, how do you fit this in? I mean, you have, you have to build it in. You just have to make the time for it. Um, it's so important. It's such important work. Um, you know, sometimes we can combine two teaching points mm -hmm. into one lesson for writing or reading so that we can make space for this work. The students are recognizing um, that we share similarities, but also we're very different. Mm -hmm. I think it's helping to build our space and, and trust and relationships, which, which hopefully will transfer throughout the whole school year. Right.